Togo Zani Bokoko Nabumkulu. I see you and those with whom you walk with. To start my presentation, I'd like to ask the question, what do you see on the screens in front of you? All right, fantastic observation. What I see is a black and white photograph of a shack sitting on some form of foundation where the photographer, in this instance, my late father, has made the considerable decision of which visual elements to include within the frame in order to convey a message. This photograph can be printed to be hung on a wall, held in your hand, or viewed on a digital platform. Therefore, a photograph is a two-dimensional object. However, I would like to contest this notion and say a photograph is a three-dimensional object. The third dimension makes reference to the spiritual, which I define as the internal experience evoking an emotional state which is unique to the viewer. Something which is not seen, but is felt or experienced. When my father died, I went in search for a photograph that would remind me of his being, because I was starting to slowly forget who he was. I remembered this photograph which hung on his office wall. You see, my father was a man with a hard exterior, which for me is represented by the shack and hard soil on the ground. However, he was a man with a kind and caring heart, which is represented by the flowers. Can you see them? I didn't always think like this. The photograph, the teddy bear on the bed, is a representation of my journey into photography, which began in 2005, where I shadowed a photojournalist, Tyron Arthur. One day, we went to a press briefing, and Tyron handed me the biggest camera that I had ever seen during the speeches. Here, give it a go. It's your turn, he said. I was nervous because I had never seen such a big camera before. And honestly, I didn't want to be the one to decapitate the CEO photographically, if you know what I mean. The next morning, my photograph made it onto the front page of the Business Day newspaper. And on that particular day, I made the bold decision that I would be pursuing a career in photography. As an undergraduate student, I was convinced that I was studying towards becoming a war photographer. However, this changed in my first year as a postgraduate student, where I was introduced to photography as a tool to conduct research. One day, my lecturer gave the class a task of coming up with a research question. As a typical student, a few minutes before submission, I quickly scribbled my topic that read, how do South African hostels look post-1994? With the hope that he would reject it and I would be given more time to come up with a better question. <laughs> to my shock, he accepted it. And that is where my dilemma began because I would have to set foot in a hostel. You see, historically, these spaces were built to house black male migrant workers migrating from the rural areas into the urban spaces and onto the mines. They were built as a form of control. The graffiti in one of the units where I photographed describes the harsh and inhumane conditions that the men were subjected to with a lack of privacy. Secondly, these spaces were a site of violence in the early 90s, leading up to the first democratic elections. One of the areas which was badly affected by this violence was Togoza, where my family resided during that time. 
As a result of the violence, we fled the area. And thirdly, in the media, hostile residents have been portrayed as violent, barbaric, and sometimes even less than human. So by choosing to go back and photograph within these spaces, I would have to face my fear of the violence I experienced as a child growing up in Togoza. And secondly, I would have to challenge my own preconceived ideas of what a hostel is and who are the people who actually live within these spaces. A way I tackled this, prob this topic was that I decided that I would photograph the living spaces. By doing so, I had the opportunity of sitting and having in-depth conversations with the residents to get their lived experience of what it is like to live within a hostel. After spending a year in the hostel, I came to realize that these spaces are more than just brick and mortar. They have a spirit, a spirit which allows the people residing them an opportunity to withstand the harsh conditions that they are subjected to. And this is where my first shift in my relationship with photography happened, where I started asking myself, what is photography? What is the role of the photographer? And how much power does the camera possess? One day, sitting on my bed and unpacking the multiple layers to my own understanding of what photography is and being drowned by the oversaturation of instant images which are available online, I came up with the decision that I would halt all photographic activity because I no longer knew where I belonged within the industry. After unpacking these multiple layers, I came to realize that for Uno Kaebo, photography is a tool, a tool to heal, serve, and contribute to society. And the same period gave me an opportunity to understand my position as a photographer. I am a photographer who photographs from the position of respect and employs the values of Ubuntu. I am because you are within her practice. Umam Tembi is a woman who I met in the hostel who had become my adopted grandmother. When I heard that she had passed on, I went to her unit to pay my last respect. As I entered the house, I met up with her daughter to ask for permission to photograph this sacred moment. She handed me a cup of tea. In that moment, I put down my camera because I was unotevo a human being and not a photographer. After drinking that cup of tea, I picked up my camera and lowered my tripod. By lowering my tripod, I would be forced to photograph on my knees. And this was a sign of respect to Umam Tembi and paying homage to the woman who opened her life up for me. As photographers, we have the responsibility to wait acknowledge and respect the spaces which win with, within which we create photographic projects and the people we photograph. We can no longer afford to hide behind the camera and think that it is okay. We need to start collaborating and co-creating with willing participants who are willing to share their lives with us. And then just maybe we will stop having subjects within our frames but living, breathing human beings who have co-created a photograph with us. I co-created a photographic exhibition with the hostel residents, which allowed the outsider into the hostel space. And this was evident when a town planner came to my exhibition and said, Notebo, for the first time, I now know what a hostel is by experiencing your photographs. And again, the second shift in my relationship with photography happened, where I started asking the question, where does photography belong? And in what spaces can, and in what other industries can the process of waiting, respecting, and acknowledging the spiritual be adopted into? 
In, at the end of 2018, I applied for my PhD in urban and regional planning, where I intend on using photography as a tool to do my research still in the hostels. And I'm currently in my first year of that PhD. You might not be a photographer as you sit here, but you are definitely an image maker. I mean, take a look at your phone today. I'm sure you've created a few images. Therefore, you have the same responsibility of waiting and respecting those you point your phone at. By employing the same process in my photographic practice, I was granted permission to photograph activities which are closed off to the world because I respected the individuals and the space that I was in. When you choose to wait, you open a different world to yourself. The next time you pick up your phone and point it at someone, ask yourself the following questions. What is my position as a photographer? Have I been granted permission to actually point my phone at this person, including your children? <laughs> Thirdly, what is the lived experience of the person that I am photographing? And lastly, if I choose to publish this photograph, what triggers could it trigger on the viewer? If we take the time to acknowledge the spiritual, we can start breathing back life into soulless environments. The next time you decide to publish a co-created photograph, what are you going to hashtag? I or we? Think, risk, and allow the shifts to keep taking place. Nyabong.